Welcome to Dressing for the Ages, a series of live talks with visuals that allow the garments to explain history to us. Dressing for the Age covers nearly 2,000 years of Western civilization. I also talk about art, architecture, interior design, and music. What follows are a few snippets of the variety of eras that I cover. Enjoy! Throughout the Middle Ages, there is little difference in what men wear versus what women wear. Women wear gowns, and so do men. In the early part of the age, for warmth, cloaks are worn over their unisex gowns. As we head into the early Renaissance, a new style of dressing came into vogue. It is a practical mode of dressing because, in the late 14th century, Europe started to turn cold. Europeans needed overcoats to survive the Little Ice Age. One such fashionable gown was called a hooplande. The hooplande is a massive garment with huge sleeves. During this colder-than-usual era, it is a practical garment. So are the hats, and especially the turban-like hats that are worn. The more fabric one has piled on the head means less heat can escape. Mid-century, a seminal event takes place that sends the proverbial shockwaves through Europe, the fall of Constantinople. From this point on, Europe will face countless conflicts with the Ottomans. This event leads to the search for new trade routes to the east. Why? Because the Ottomans charge a hefty price for Christian ships to sail through the Bosphorus on their way to and from the Silk Road. This gives us Cristobal Colon, otherwise known as Christopher Columbus. Isabel and Fernando are ambitious monarchs. Their goal is to unite Spain into one kingdom, their kingdom. Castile and Aragon, indeed the entire Iberian Peninsula, has been involved in warfare for 600 years. Finally, Granada, the last remaining kingdom of the Islamic rulers of Spain, falls. Now the Catholic monarchs turn their attention to kingdom building. They must trade with the East to produce economic stability. That is why Fernando and Isabel decide to support Columbus in his quest to find a new trade route to India. I suggest that the Renaissance fashion trends started in the Mediterranean countries because they were warmer. Clothing isn't as heavy, so it becomes more refined. In Spain, we see the beginnings of the hoop-skirt-tight bodice combination that would soon take Europe by storm. In fact, for the next 400 years, women will wear some form of hoop skirts. We are into the world of the Three Musketeers, of worldly cardinals, of queens from Spain, and the incomparable and absolute monarch, Louis the Fourteenth. On the other side of the channel, it is Charles I who claims the full authority of his kingdom. His result will not end as nicely as Louis's will. Charles will lose his head, and England will suffer through an awful civil war. Whilst politically it is a dark century, in the arts it is bright with achievements. It is the age when clothing evolved dramatically from the exaggerations of the early part of the century to the lovely gowns of the Louis XIII period to the drama of Louis XIV's costume balls. At the end of the 17th century, we see the 18th century coming into view.
Isn't history so much more exciting and beautiful when the garments tell the story? If you would like one of these talks at your location, contact me. And thanks for watching.